Or really, it's the understanding that all acts of creation, whether it's artistic, whether it's invention, whether it's creative solutions, whether it's music, uh, anything that comes into being, all that energy, all that inspiration is all the same energy. It's all the one life energy, or it's all the divine energy. Hi, I'm Aaron Tomlinson. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk to you about what I'm calling occult therapy. So what is occult therapy? Now, if you've been following the channel anytime at all, I don't want to keep repeating myself. But when I'm talking about the occult, I'm talking about hidden ancient wisdom. We're talking about specifically occult teachings in the hermetic tradition. And I want to talk to you about how well-being for the human being, both physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually, would be approached from the hermetic perspective. Today, well-being is approached in the physical body through an allopathic method of medicine where we treat the body in its parts, right? We look for germs, we look for viruses, we look for medicines that will fix the parts. It's not holistic in the sense that it's trying to balance or bring harmony to the whole person. Now, Chinese medicine, on the other hand, and Eastern medicine, really treats the whole person. They see disease as a byproduct of some kind of disharmony that's going on inside the person or with the person's life. And that's closer to the Western approach of medicine that comes from the hermetic tradition. So it's important to understand that um, w w when we're talking about this, that we're talking about the human being as an energetic being as a byproduct of energy that is operating within the universe that eventually brings about the human being. So the approach to well-being would be energetic rather than allopathic. Now, psychologically, we tend to treat what's going on in the mind, what's going on in the cognitions, what's going on in the behaviors. One of the most common treatment forms in therapy today is known as cognitive behavioral therapy. So we're treating the contents of the mind, the thinking, the way you think, how you think about things, and then how you behave in life. And by changing those things, then you can improve your well-being. That would be completely foreign to ancient wisdom and is completely, uh, when we're talking about occult therapy, we're talking about something totally different than that, because what we're looking at is the balancing of energy centers or the balancing of this energy that's working inside of the human being. Now, there's another principle that I want to talk about briefly that is part of the hermetic corpus, and that is this idea that everything is created out of sexual energy. Everything was created out of sexual energy, and so everything has a masculine property or a feminine property, or it can have both. Now, let me define what masculine and feminine means in from the perspective of hermetic wisdom. The masculine principle is that anything in creation that ex is expansive, that expands something. So the masculine energy expands, it pushes forward, it thrusts, you could say, um, it, it injects the environment with its energy and with itself. And then the feminine principle is that which receives that which has been expanded and contracts it. So the masculine energy is expansive energy and the feminine energy is a contracting or almost destructive energy. And so we have these two principles of creation and destruction that are operating and that's what gives form and fills creation. So remember, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. That's the masculine energy going forth like fire. Or in the Egyptian creation story, the world was created because the Egyptian God uh, masturbated. <laughs> and so it was all created out of sexual energy. Sigmund Freud kind of picked up on this when he said that the driving force inside of every person is their libido. Now, of course, Freud got into some really strange things, and it's not really incorporated in any way, shape, or form into uh, psychotherapy today, but I just want you to get an understanding of this principle. Now, when we're talking about sexual energy from a occult perspective, we're not talking about 
uh, just the erotic. The erotic is something that is certainly connected to sexual energy, but it's not the same thing that we're talking about because in these ancient philosophies, it was believed that not only was sexual energy used between a man and a woman to create another human being, to inject life and bring new life onto the planet. And of course, everything that is living has this uh, sexual component, this male female component to it, or it wouldn't be able to reproduce. So what I want you to see is, is that the energy of life, what makes you a living being, what gives you passions for anything in life is all this one energy that is sexual in nature. And so there was a lot of teaching uh, in uh, the ancient wisdom. You can find it in the writings of Napoleon Hill about this idea of transmuting sexual energy, or really it's the understanding that all acts of creation, whether it's artistic, whether it's invention, whether it's creative solutions, whether it's music, uh, anything that comes into being, all that energy, all that inspiration is all the same energy. It's all the one life energy, or it's all the divine energy. So in Christianity, what we did was we went to war with ourselves, and we tried to extinguish that fire. We tried to extinguish those energies so that really it became nothing more than a death cult. And if you tried to practice that, you would be at war with your body. You'd be at war with your energies. You try to suppress your anger. You try to suppress creativity because you have to conform to everything around you. And then certainly there was the suppression or, or restrictions upon sexual energy and sexual behaviors. In the hermetic teachings, uh, the idea is to balance these energies within yourself, to balance the masculine and the feminine, and to uh, raise up the libido, to raise up this energy of life, this divine energy. And in the elevation or the raising up or the expressing of that divine energy of that libido, then uh, super supernatural powers would become available. And so that's where the magic portion of the occult or hermetic teaching comes into play. But first of all, you have to balance the energy centers within yourself. So occult therapy would look at the person more from an energy perspective and a uniting of masculine and feminine energies within the person to bring wholeness and well-being rather than just treating the mind or treating a part or treating behaviors. And so the well-being or the therapy that happens then is a working with the energies, is a recognition of the energy within you and being able to work with that energy. So you might be saying, Aaron, okay, so what? Well, let me just invite you to do a little experiment. Uh, if you find yourself in a place of distress, if you find yourself in a place of dis-ease mentally and emotionally, rather than just sitting in it and feeling it, or rather than uh, trying to look at what's going on in your mind and just change how you're thinking about it, or rather than just journaling or taking a walk or whatever the case may be, just feel into your body and try to feel into the energies and look at it from an energetic perspective. In other words, ask yourself this question, what energy is imbalanced in me right now? And you can look at it, is it expansive energy that's being repressed, which means I've got too much destructive or constricting energy? Or is it something else? And is it the other way around? And just kind of work with that and then try to move that energy. So if you're feeling uh, op an oppression, you're feeling a distress and you're feeling it in your heart, just look at that as energy and understand that you can move energy through the will and through the mind and see what you can do with that energy. See if you can't just release it somehow. You might imagine it like uh, a specific color that best represents what you're feeling. Uh, if you're feeling anger, maybe it's hot, you feel hot. And so you can imagine that as like a red energy. And in your mind, you can just imagine that and allow it to dissipate or allow it to flow down your body and out your feet and into the ground and see if you can't ground yourself and balance yourself energetically and kind of play with that and see how that works for you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for you. If you'd like to learn more about this, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please uh, follow the link in the bio and uh, I will see you next time.